cramping is something that is making ramping. So I have a reaction ball here. You could use just a pink eraser. You could use anything. I've used tennis balls before. Something that you can feel underneath your body. You could use a bottle cap. One of my favorite tools to assign clients is to use a rolled up washcloth because just about everybody has something like that. You could even use your jujitsu belt. What we're going to do here is find areas of your body that you either don't have a great amount of contact with or you um, have too much contact with. <laughs> Although you could argue that when you have like a sore spot or a really tight spot, you don't have great control over that area anyway. And likely you don't have great control over the neighboring areas and that area is just working harder because of the lack of engagement of the rest of it. So what I'd like you to do is to take this skill video uh, that I'm gonna try to make fairly short and go ahead and try a bunch of different spots around your back, maybe in your legs, all these kinds of things, okay? So to start off, I just wanna teach you using your thighs. So sit in a comfortable position. You could have one leg bent, one leg straight, whatever. And place your hand just broadly on your right thigh to start, okay? I'm gonna give you a five second count. Actually, I'll give you a 10 second count. And we're gonna gradually try to squeeze the muscle, trying to smoothly ramp it up until you've engaged the quad entirely. And then we're going to smoothly ramp it down. What's going to probably happen is that you're not going to feel that it's that smooth at all. You could even put both hands on here so you have a broader contact and you can kind of feel like where engages first. Um, and then you'll be able to compare it to the other side, okay? So 10 second count up and then 10 second count down. Ready? Begin to slowly engage, pretending you're just trying to get one cell online. How lightly can you engage that quad? And begin to increase for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Max it out if you haven't already, squeezing as much as you can without any pain. And if you feel like it's all going into your knee, see if you can take a little of the tension out there, and it will be attached, but see if you can get more engagement into the quad itself. Releasing for 10, nine, try to make it smooth, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. If you have any left, go ahead and let the rest of that out. How close were you? A lot of people probably got to about number three by the time I was at zero. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Ready, increasing for one, two, three, try to smooth it out, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine at your max, and releasing for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, letting it all out and relax. Let's try your left leg. All right, broad contact. Put your head in your muscle and begin very lightly, increasing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Max it out. Find anything you can. I'll let you study this for a second. And slowly letting that out for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And what I already know about myself is that this side is much jumpier, a lot smoother than it used to be. It's kind of like things engaging here and here, where this side is a pretty even keel up and down. Um, also, that my yeah, so like my end ranges weren't as smooth and my timing wasn't quite as good on this side. Something else for you to notice, which is really important, um, is whether or not you have a lot of other things that are engaging that you didn't ask for. So for this last one on this side, go ahead and pay attention to how smooth your ramp is. Try to get a little better uh, and try to visualize like smoothing out some drywall or something like that. Um, and then notice if you have other parts of your body that are trying to help. Okay, ready and begin. Increasing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Max it out and releasing for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Letting it all out. Okay. Um, what you also find is you may have some areas that aren't really engaging much at all. And that's an interesting thing to investigate as well. Okay. If you have other things that are engaging to try to help along the way, that means that they're firing together. In neurology, there's a common term called things that fire together, wire together. For example, for your fingers, if you always move two fingers together, or all your fingers, 
it's very unlikely that you're going to have good control or brain mapping for each individual finger. It's not that the muscles are so that you can you can only do that. Same thing with your toes. There's no reason you can only move all your toes at once. Um, it's just a matter of articulating it in your brain and things that you haven't really done before. So you can train any of that stuff. The quads are the easiest, I think, to learn this from. You could learn maybe biceps to kind of engage isometrically, isometric meaning engagement without movement like we just did. Um, but I want you to know that you can do this for every single part of your body. You can learn to ramp in any position, and the longer that you draw that ramp out, the greater and smoother control that you have, the higher um, your maximum number of engagement is going to be. So it could be like 10, but your 10 today could look totally different from your 10 after working on this for a couple of weeks, right? Your 10 could be much more controlled, much more complete, and much more encompassing. Um, if you and for example, um, low back pain and shoulder pain are probably the two most common things that people come up with, although I would say that chest is probably a big one that people don't really recognize a lot as well. Um, that was kind of the squeeze release method. So just to teach you another option, we're going to use their leg again because it's just a simple thing to do, and you probably have pretty decent brain mapping, although I have had people with that whose brains did not recognize their hamstring at all. It's crazy. And again, you might need a bigger ball for this. I'm just placing the ball underneath of my thigh in a place that I can feel. If I didn't feel it, I might put it up on a yoga block or get a larger target or something like that so that I could feel. If you're using a washcloth, you might have to really ball it up or get a larger towel, for example, okay? So now we're going to do the press and release method, which is just a slow, gradual pressing down, okay? And slowly letting it up. So let's just do this for 10 seconds down and 10 seconds up, trying this method, ready? Begin to press, increasing your pressure for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Really try to flatten whatever your target is out into the floor. And slowly releasing for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You may find this easier if you're leaning back or supported by the wall, of course, too, okay? Number two, begin to press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hold that pressure, max it out if you can, and begin to release for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now I could do this, have done the same thing if I flipped over and worked on my quad this way. Beginning to press myself down into the block and noticing if I'm using other muscles. For example, I felt the first rep, my quad was doing a lot of work, even though I was asking the hamstring to do it. Um, let's see what we can do on the other side. Okay, so placing the ball somewhere underneath of your right leg and finding a comfortable position to work from, because if you're distracted by something else going on in your body, you're not going to get the focus that you want. And that goes for all mobility training stuff. If you're work, trying to work on something, but something else is kind of crying out, you probably need to work on the other thing first or change your position or the amount of load that you're using, okay? So gradually increasing here, ready? Going down for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, smash it down, gradually release for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Pressing down for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Releasing for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. And like I said, the places you probably need this most, or most people do, is areas around their back. Like I would try all over my back, maybe the chest, around the shoulders. Um, think of it this way, like, you know, those CGI um, like dots that they put all over people for Gollum, for example, in Lord of the Rings, where they're wearing the suits and they have dots all over their bodies. The greater amount of dots you have, and the greater awareness and those points of um, those points of motion <laughs> that you have um, are going to make a better map between you and your body and give you more options of things to do. If you only had a couple of dots around your body was aware of, you kind of get that clunky movement where everything is just moving like this and it's not going to give you very fluid motion, and it certainly puts a lot of strain on those areas versus dividing the amount of weight across um, 
the whole body. So if I start to build out this map by doing ramping in different areas, finding parts that I didn't have great control over, finding parts that are sore, helping them squeeze and release. This is what I would assign somebody if they had um, a spasm in a back muscle where they're kind of locked up. It's just to trust, but breathe, breathing first, and then squeezing and releasing in that area to get more better brain mapping in the body and reassure your, everything that it's okay. okay? So drawing more dots on yourself can be as simple as using your target to squeeze and release. So the one last thing we're going to do for this, and you can apply it to anywhere you want, go and try it on your back, or whatever, is to take a finger and put it somewhere on your quad. Okay, So just continue to use this muscle that you probably have a decent amount of mapping on. And what I want you to do is try to push your finger out using your muscular contraction. Okay. And what you'll notice is other parts of your muscle that are engaged, right? So we're going to try to isolate this uh, three times, and then we'll do another spot for three times, and then maybe we'll do the other leg too, we'll see. Okay, so picking one area, pressing down firmly without pain, but kind of giving yourself a little divot there, and you're slowly going to try to focus all your attention. The first I'm doing is just noticing and drawing all my attention to that spot that I'm poking, okay? Now I'd like to use that muscle, just adjust the molecules, just those cells underneath of that to gradually press, um, squeeze so that it pushes my finger out of the position, okay? So gradually increasing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And what I've learned is that I have some muscles on the side of my leg that are things that are coming first to action. So my mapping is a little better. Actually, it's not even. It's just stuff that I wasn't asking for. <laughs> so we'll see if we can improve this, right? Slowly releasing for 10, 9, 8, 7. The muscle is turning to jelly. It's 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, two more times. Focusing in on that one spot again. I can make a little motion here to be like, hey, Bonnie, this is what I want, okay? And focusing just there, increasing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Push it out, okay? At this top level, I'm going to see if I can keep that and let some of that side muscle go without losing that position. It's hard. And then slowly releasing, turning it back to, buddle, uh, to puddle of mud <laughs> or jelly, whatever. Slowly releasing for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm not going to lie, if you don't have a good amount, if you aren't able to concentrate very well, um, this could be difficult for you. It's an extremely challenging and extremely engaging thing because it probably feels like something you should be able to do. And if it's an area of your body that you don't have a lot of mapping, you feel like absolutely nothing is happening. But I promise you, I promise you that if you work at it, it's going to increase your awareness and it's going to gradually give your body more options. What I would recommend after doing any of these mapping drills is to follow up with controlled articular rotations for the area that you're working or maybe your whole body so your body can kind of reorganize itself. Going for a walk would also be a really great idea to organize in a locomotive pattern, okay? So one more time here. Let's make it your best one yet. Gradually using just those muscle fibers, increasing for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. What you could do is also, once you feel something else firing that you didn't ask for, is to stop and reset and work up until that point again. So the first couple, uh, maybe I would have stopped at number seven because I felt like other things were engaging that I didn't ask for. So that I start to separate the wiring, so to speak, um, the living wiring um, between my brain and the controls down here, okay? Slowly releasing for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, I once uh, assigned a fellow FRCMS or functional range conditioning mobility specialist um, who had incredibly tight quads to try to get, and also an advanced practice, to try to get from a ramp that was from zero to 100. And if you had mastered that, I can, the, the amount of 
weight that he could bear, the amount of control that he had, the ease in his legs just completely changed. So just things to think about that you can shoot for it to start out, whatever your patience allows, okay? So that's a basic introduction to ramping. Again, I would recommend you play around with going here. You could uh, on a shoulder or something like that, uh, anywhere that you feel is a generally tight area and start exploring a couple of spots in that area to see what you have good control over and what you don't. Um, it'll feel amazing, it'll be very relaxing. Um, you'll either be very frustrated or fall asleep probably. And I'd also recommend another thing you could do is to pair your breathing with it. So maybe a long exhale while you're trying to squeeze the muscle. Long inhale, excuse me. Inhaling as you're trying to squeeze the muscle and a nice relaxed exhale as you're trying to relax it. Or at least the exhale as you're trying to relax it can be very helpful for getting yourself out of a fight state and into a parasympathetic state, okay? Um, just doing a couple of these, ramping a few times before you get on the mat could be helpful as well. Although I think it's probably best to do this in a dedicated practice and um, at a time where you're probably not going to go jumping onto the mat right away, okay? Um, use any tool that you want, get creative with that. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.